Let's play around with messages a bit this time, to add more interaction between our graphs. We'll be transferring data between them. Here we have our function governing the motion detector, which turns the alarm light on. To put it in other words, we're going to be using messages to command functions. Think of it as though the functions are going to be using radios to talk to each other. Let's open the messages manager and create a new message. The messages manager allows us to create all sorts of messages that our functions may call. No, I created a blank default one. Let's delete it. That was silly. Well, no worries. No harm done. Anyway, this one we're going to call alarm on, and we're also going to give it a brief description. Descriptions are always useful to have, especially if you're going to be working with a lot of stuff. So get in that good habit. And uh, don't mind that typo. Life is uh, too short for that particular one. Okay, now we're going to associate this message with a variable. We'll first add a name for it, since that's always a good practice to do. Rotation on. There we go. Now, since this is an on-off toggle, let's give it the boolean type. Booleans have a, have a single on-off state. Uh, so now we have a message with, uh, which is associated with a true or false variable, which means it can be read and interpreted as a command. The software doesn't inherently know what the message means, so we just explained that to it. And let's select the uh, send to receiver message activator because we want to send this message to a rotating light. By default this block has the first message it gets a hold on from the manager. See? Alarm on. You can have many other messages, of course. Okay, so now we're going to complete the logic circuit by connecting the whole block to our message activator. And now we'll connect our binary value to the receiver's value. Beautiful, isn't it? That's object-oriented programming for you. With hard text, you'd have to be picturing these associations in your head. Now let's get our receiver in there, which is the rotating light's Visio component. Uh, we won't be sending this message to the object itself, but instead to its Visio component. Now, this is because we only want to affect the one particular aspect of the object, and it's got multiple other aspects we don't need to bother with. Indeed, the program wouldn't understand what we want to do if you don't specify that aspect. Okay, so let's save this. Uh, now we'll go over to the light zone graph and set it up there to receive the message command. Let's give it a message receiver so it'll be able to listen to the message. Otherwise it can't because it's a piece of software and software is very specific indeed. Uh, rearranging this thing for more elegance. Rotation on, enable. Makes perfect sense. Anyway, let's test our program. Yes, this is always the fun part. Okay, let's go slow that we can see it better. There's our rotating light, let's watch it. Oh, look at that, the wireframe is spinning. Plus we can see how the appropriate logic elements in the graph are outlined in red. Okay, it's more of a magenta than red. As you can see, if we exit our trigger, the light simply freezes in place. And um, so as you can see from the graph, when we enter the trigger, it's true. And when we exit, it's false. Simple. Thanks for watching.